So Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this great blessing of allowing us to witness another Ramadan. And of course from the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we've discussed over the last few weeks is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to witness this blessed month. Uh, Insha'Allah this month in our Taraweeh or during our Taraweeh prayers after the fourth rakah we'll have a short reminder insha'Allah just some reflections that I'll share with you on maybe an ayah that's recited or that's going to be recited. Today's ayah is um, ayah number 21 from Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, Shaykh Abdul Ghaffar, he recited it in the second rakah of Salat Al-Isha. So it was the first ayah he recited when he started the second rakah of Isha. Um, what is this verse? Firstly, when it comes to Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, as we all know, is the longest surah in the Quran. There are 286 verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. And it was revealed over a number of years. Yes, some scholars said nine years. Um, during the Medinan period. Now what is the Medinan period? We all know that the Prophet والسلام, when he was living in Mecca, at the age of 40 he received revelation. And then for the next 12 or 13 years he's giving da'wah in Mecca. And then he migrates to Medina. Okay, so the Meccan period is known as that period before the migration to Medina. And then the Medinan period is that period after the migration. So this surah was revealed largely during the Medinan period, during the period where the Muslims were now establishing an Islamic state. And of course there are many themes when you look at Surah Al-Baqarah, the general themes of the Meccan period were, when it came to the surahs and the ayat, were Tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connecting with Allah, understanding that there's an akhirah, etc, etc. When it came to the Medinan period, the general theme of the ayat and the surahs are, are dealing with laws. Okay? Because now there's a state that needs to be established and there's going to be laws that run that state. When it comes to Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, although it was revealed during the Medinan period, it contains both. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Tawheed in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Akhirah in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the laws in Surah Al-Baqarah. So Surah Al-Baqarah is unique in that it subhanallah has both Tawheed and, and the Makki theme and it also has the Madani theme. Now at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha, we make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We say, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, guide us to the straight path. The straight path of course is the path of the Prophets, it's the path of the Anbiya, the Siddiqeen, the truthful ones. Um, so this is the path we're asking Allah to guide us on. But at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us That this path that we're asking guidance for, Allah tells us that the path of guidance is the path of the Anbiya, of course, but it's found in the Qur'an. That this Qur'an is our book of guidance. Now the first 20 ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah, they discuss categories of people. Okay, the first 20 ayat, they discuss different categories of people. So it discusses the believers, and then it discusses um, the kuffar, the disbelievers, and then the munafiqeen. And then the 21st ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. In the 21st verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then changes, discussing the different uh, groups of people. Now Allah comes with a command. And this is the first command we find in Surah Al-Baqarah. And what is the command? The command is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We be people of ibadah. This is the command that we find in the 21st verse of Surah Al-Baqarah. And what is ibadah? The question is that when Allah commands us with ibadah, what is Allah commanding us with? What does ibadah actually mean? What is what we translate as worship? The ulama, they tell us that ibadah is al khudu' and tadallul. It's submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's subservience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibadah is where you submit yourself to the Creator, Allah Jalla wa ala. This is ibadah, where you recognize that you have a Creator who is worthy of worship. And you forego your desires, your ego, and the trends of society. Why? Because you want to fulfill the promise to Allah and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah, one of the scholars of the past, he said that ibadah is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. 
in words and deeds. When you think about ibadah, we generally tend to think that ibadah is what? Rituals. Your prayer, okay, fasting Ramadan, reading the Quran. This of course is part and parcel of ibadah. But ibadah is a broad term. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah, one of the great scholars of the past, he said that it's the utmost degrees of love to Allah accompanied by complete surrender. This is ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves what? He loves for you to be good to your family. Yes, so when you're good to your family, you look after them, you provide for them. This is ibadah. You have that intention, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for you to be good to your neighbor. You look after your neighbor, you fulfill their rights. This is ibadah. This is worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for you to take care of the poor and needy. You do that. This is ibadah. So ibadah subhanAllah is a very broad term. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to stay away from the haram. And this is why some of the scholars, they said ibadah is ta'a, it's obedience. So when you obey Allah and you stay away from those things which He's prohibited, this is also ibadah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what? He says, worship, perform this ibadah, rabb, to your rabb. And the word rabb, subhanAllah, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an all-encompassing name. When we say rabb, we try and translate it as Lord. But rabb is actually the sustainer. Rabb is the owner, Rabb is the master, Rabb is the one who nourishes. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't yani, understand who it is we're talking about. We're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who sustains each and every one of us. The one who is our creator, Jalla wa ala. Allah is our Rabb, my dear brothers and sisters. So when we think about Allah, understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who loves you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who wants good for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who takes care of your needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's there when nobody else is. This is Rabb. And what's interesting is when you look at Surah Al-Fatiha, we start off by saying what? What's the first verse in Surah Al-Fatiha? This is not a trick question by the way. The first verse in Surah Al-Fatiha is what? A lot of memory going on. After the Basmala we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen So after we say the Basmala we say Alhamdulillah If you were to open the Quran and say Alhamdulillah and read Alhamdulillah All praises for Allah And you don't know nothing about Islam, you don't know nothing about anything And you were to say all praises for Allah Who is Allah? Allah tells us Rabbul Alameen He is What's this? Sorry he is Rabbul Alameen. He is the master, the sustainer of everything that exists. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts Surah Al-Fatiha, He introduces Himself as the Rabb. The Rabb, the one who sustains, the master, the owner. Know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The first ayat to be revealed upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, which ayat? From which surah? Who can tell me? Yes, from Surah Al-Alaq. Subhanallah, Allah, the first thing He mentions and introduces the Prophet ﷺ to Himself is what? That Allah is the Rabb. So always remember, my dear brothers and sisters, what Rabb actually means. That Allah is the sustainer, the nourisher. Allah is the master, the owner. This is our Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, and I'll come to the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that we should worship Him. The one who created you and I. And those before us as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He created you, He created those before you. He created your parents. You might think, where have I come from? I came from my parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made your parents a means to bring you into existence. But He is the creator. And He created those before you. He created the first of creation. He created Adam alayhi salam. And all of those who came after. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this ayah that He is the Khaliq. He is the creator of everything that we see around us. And then he ends the ayah by saying what? In order that you become people who are conscious of Allah. The uh, objective of our ibadah, the objective, objective of our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we become people who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we become people in everything that we do. We're conscious of Allah. As we said, ibadah is broad. It's not just the prayer. Ibadah is everything that you do. My dear brothers and sisters, that Allah loves. 
You do that with the right intention, you're conscious of Allah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. He wants to create, He wants to see within us people who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this month of Ramadan, let's reflect on ibadah. Let's reflect on our worship and let's reflect on our worship with our Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's strive to improve that relationship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us tawfiq. Wa akhru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.